I'm somewhere here on our way to uh, South Georgia Island on the Sea Spirit, and I've got Justin Edelman with me who is going to talk a bit about cleaning a sensor on a mirrorless camera. I know a couple of years ago we did it for DSLRs, and Justin has kindly offered to show how to clean a sensor on a, uh, a Sony camera, a uh, mirrorless. So, Justin, thank you so much for taking the time to do this for us. First off, I was going to ask you, how do you determine that you need a sensor cleaning? <laughs> um, well, compared to a regular DSLR with a mirror, these get dirty pretty easily. So you'll see it show up pretty quickly, especially if you start stopping up your, or stepping down your aperture. Um, you'll start to really see the little hairs and dust speckles. So, um, yeah, the basic, basic technique, I guess, is to take, stop the aperture down and shoot against the sky or something. Yeah, right. That's a quick it. way to see it. Um, actually, you can even visually see it. So the sensor, that's it. That's true. See, I'm looking in mine and I see a, a mirror. A, a mirror which <laughs> reflecting up through the. But with these things, you have the sensor just constantly exposed. So it's pretty easy to get something on it. Um, I actually, at the end of a shoot, will generally go through and inspect everything and then sometimes just do a cleaning before I leave or something like that because depending on where you are in the world, we're not always in a nice little library in the back of a cruise ship. So uh, the elements can be worse uh, in, in trying to clean it. And I'm going to um, point out one thing too. If you get a mirrorless camera that doesn't have an interchangeable lens, <laughs> take your lens right. off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah, and then obviously, knowing the fact that your sensor is exposed like this, mm -hmm. you have to be really conscious of that out in the field. You know, if you're in an area with salt spray, or you're out in the desert and there's that real fine kind of sand or dust up and kicked up in the yeah, air, get in there, yeah. you gotta just be very cautious of changing your sensor, or you know, sorry, changing your lens. Africa, that fine dust gets into everything. Right. Yeah. So generally, it's kind of the same as cleaning a lens, right? Where you want to get the big dust specks off first. So I usually will just give her a good blow. Um, another thing you can, another thing you can try to do uh, ahead of time is there is actually sort of the sensor shake on here in the menu. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, where is it? Cleaning mode, forms in image sensor, and you'll feel it, it vibrates it. So that will kind of oh, so it's like a ultrasonic right. It'll shake it off. So it's it's the same mechanism actually that does the image stabilization because this actually has a floating sensor. So you can have a fixed prime lens uh, and have image stabilization on it even if it's not built into the lens, which oh, is okay. kind of a nice feature. So once that's done, then I'll have a little sensor scope. Mm -hmm. This is my little travel guy, and I'll just kind of get a little peek to see if there's any big spots. If anything in particular that I see, and this is just real fine hair is really on there right now. Nice. I assume they can pick these up from a camera store yep. or online through one so of I the got the. Uh, uh, so I want to back up a little bit. Okay. It's kind of hard yeah. to see because of the reflection, but you'll see there's real fine hairs yep. on there. Um, and then you have a special sensor brush, which I'm sure you've seen before. Sure. Um, and I usually take out two. These things are actually very expensive. I mean, it's five dollars a piece, mm -hmm. but we're not sensor cleaning that often, hopefully. Um, and they have kits that have a bunch of them in there. Do you ever use the uh, like the camel hair brushes uh, on these cameras? I have not. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but um, no, I'd be afraid to honestly, only because it it's hard to clean those. This is sterile. This came out of a plastic bag, you know, so it's. I know it's sterile. So well, they have those one. I think they call it the butterfly. It's supposedly uh, specially clean and it builds up a charge. It's supposed to suck the dust off. Them. Right. I've yeah. never used one, so I don't know. Do you, do you remember the radioactive brushes? No, no. Yeah, they had for Hasselblad. They had actually a, ra a radioactive. Radium. It was charged. So just do one nice sweep across. And I point out that is the same this is size as the sensor, isn't it? Basically, they're not all like that. I actually, this is the first time I've used this brush. I actually like it when it's a little bit smaller. So I'll do a couple sweeps. And I have one brush that's my wet brush, and then I have one brush that's my damp brush. Or I use a special, there's a special cleaning fluid here. 
Right. Which is like 100% pure there. alcohol. I'm sure if the airline saw what I was trying to fly with, <laughs> they'd be pretty upset. How many ounces is that? It's yeah, like right. More so the flammability of it. Yes. But in general, if you have some bad stuff, you can just see it like this. You know, you can, you can see there's a little something on there. And then since I have two bodies here, I'll just clean both. So I'll even give it one more blow afterwards. And then I'll give it a check. Let's see how this thing looks. And by the way, for you, those of you with the DSLRs, these will work uh, with the DSLRs as well. Right. You just got to do a mirror lockout first. The important thing is to make sure you get all the big stuff off so you're not scratching your sensor because mm -hmm. that's, you scratch yes. your sensor here. <laughs> that's that's it. it. Ladies and gentlemen, now at 3 o'clock, I'm going to prepare the history oh, of the You got an announcement. It's a tale of endurance, of course, a story of Shackleton. I want to see this. Yes, we both do. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what time is it? Oh, we got 10 minutes. You got 10 minutes, so. All right. A nice big speck in the bottom there. Look at this web one more time. This is for the benefit of our Chinese listeners. <laughs> this is the daily life on the ship. Yeah, this definitely adds a new layer to uh, filming and photography today, you yes. know. And this is very important, otherwise you're spending all your time and going through off. and remove the little dust specks, which generally show up in uh, the clear areas like the sky in your images. Yeah, and if you're really, you know, if you're stepped down on your aperture, then you'll really see it no right. matter what. I mean, if you have a hair on there, you'll see a hair in your shot. Yeah, the smaller the aperture, the uh, more they show up. I'm saying that right, stepping down your aperture, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, tiny. Yeah, tiny. 22. Uh, I'm going to... 32, whatever. Yeah, now it's not so exciting. <laughs> yeah, you're going for a double. Now this one I just kind of do a dry off. run, yeah. yeah. Get any residue that's on there off. So I work in a lot of salty sea spray environments, and yeah, they can leave uh, deposits on there. Right, the exactly. Mineral deposits. I'm just trying to get all that off. It's important to blow it out. I should mention that too, because if you do have sand or something here, you do not want to scratch that sensor. Exactly. Very expensive repair, or yeah. that's the end of the or camera. Or totals your camera. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are scared to do this, but uh, it doesn't really worry me. I end up doing a lot of this at our uh, workshops, people that uh, are a little hesitant to do it on their own. And if you're lucky enough to have a camera shop in your town, the chances yeah. are they'll, they'll probably charge you quite a bit. To do 50 too. to 80 bucks in yep. my town. So this was, an, this that was another... Ahead. And as expensive as these are, they're a lot cheaper than that. Yeah, right. Exactly. Man, this is, these are, I don't love these brushes. They kind of leave a lot of residue. And I don't know if you've ever used ones, but they've also got these that have, um, you can get the, the little cloth. Yeah. A, a dust-free cloth that fold around there that you can use, and their uh, sticks are reusable. Okay. Kind of nice. Yeah, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, I, I went to NAB a couple years ago and I yeah, talked to one of the, the National Association of Broadcasters convention. I talked to one of the reps there and I said, "What do you, what do you do about all the hairs that get out?" sensor and he's like, "Oh, we didn't, we don't run into that issue." I'm like, "Well, really, it's an issue." <laughs> Yeah, this was before they actually had really come out with these. They had a couple um, mirrorless. It was it was a mirrorless video camera, so like the Sony VG10 and yeah. VG20, and it was the same thing where there's just so you can really see. Look at this one, big old speck on there, right in the oh, corner yeah, there. Oh yeah, yeah. 
I can see it even without my glasses. Yeah, right. So that one's, I don't even know what that is. It's a hair. And that actually took care of it, blowing it out. So depending on this sensor, this is a, I haven't used this camera a whole lot. So this sensor should be pretty clean. I may not actually, yeah, there's like one little speck on there. Let's see if I can just blow it off. If I can avoid. Yeah, I guess you could say less is uh, more in this case. If yeah. If you can avoid doing it, then you're uh, less chance of scratching the sensor. Or... I'll try to just knock that little guy off. So yeah, overall, this sensor is really clean. There's no point. I'm not going to brush it just to brush it. So we'll add in here, sometimes they say, do not try this at home. But seriously, do try this at home. <laughs> yeah, right. Look it up. Look at the procedure. It's not as scary as you think. Yes, it's not that bad. No. And um, you can save yourself 50, 80 bucks to have it taken in and have it done professionally. And, and also, you know, depending on what kind of photography you're into, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, and you're taking pictures of penguins or whatever, and now you're getting all these hairs in your shots, and sometimes it's bad enough that it really could be very difficult to take it to out. To remove it, yes. Right, and then in that case, it's really nice to know how to do this. There's few things that are more boring than sitting and taking in a Lightroom or your uh, raw converter and despecking the <laughs> Removing the dust specs. It's cool. That's it. All right. Well, I do appreciate it. Yeah. Real exciting watching dust get removed from <laughs> mirrorless. Right. Well, thank you.